Hey everyone, so I passed the PE exams in California in April of this year, 2017. Uh, that was first try with no review courses. So I thought um, I'd make a video to cover exactly what's on the exam to hopefully help all of you pass as well. So as you all probably already know, the PE exam is made up of two four-hour exams written back to back on the same day. The morning exam is the one that covers all civil engineering topics and is the same for everyone who takes that cycle. And the afternoon exam is sort of your discipline specific exam where you get to choose from construction, geotechnical, structural, transportation, or water resources. So for this video, I'm just going to cover what's on the morning exam and I'll talk about the afternoon exams and give some general studying advice in separate videos. So the first thing I recommend you do is go to the NC's website and download the exam specifications. Uh, this is going to tell you exactly what's on the exam and how much each topic is weighted. And that's exactly how you should be allocating your study efforts. So for this video, I'm just going to walk through the morning portions of these specifications and unpack them one by one. So let's begin. Okay, so the first couple of topics are the construction engineering questions. So topic one is project planning. Uh, within that, you have quantity takeoff methods. So these are basic area and volume calculations. So mostly geometry related. Uh, should be very relatively simple. Um, B is cost estimating. Similar to quantity takeoffs, you'll have to calculate an area or a volume and apply a unit rate to determine the cost. They also might throw in um, something more complicated like maybe a, uh, a unit rate for a mile of truck and you'll have to know how far your dump site is or something along those lines. The project schedules and activity identification and sequencing, um, those are your basic scheduling questions. So you'll have to know topics like activity on node, activity on point scheduling, the critical path method, etc. Uh, topic two, means and methods. Uh, within that, you have construction loads. These are mostly statics questions. Uh, for example, a crane might be picking up a weirdly shaped object and you have to find its center of mass or you have to find one of the, so a tension in one of the cables during the pick or something along those lines. B, construction methods. These are mostly conceptual or OSHA related. Uh, C, temporary structures and facilities. These, uh, again, are probably concept, conceptual type questions. Uh, know your OSHA slope requirements. You're almost guaranteed to get one of those questions on the exam. Also know your braced excavations. You'll probably have to find like the load in a strut or a raker, for example. Okay, top, topic three, soil mechanics. So now we're starting to get into the real meat of the exam. Uh, geotechnical, Structural and water resources make up the vast majority of the exam. Uh, so first topic is lateral earth pressures. So these are your Rankine, Coulomb, and Terzaghi earth pressures. Know the difference between them. Know their equations. Know the difference between active, passive, and at-rest pressures. And also know how to incorporate the water table. So you're using buoyant unit weights and you're adding the full hydrostatic load. Next topic is soil consolidation. You'll need to know the consolidation equation um, to calculate settlement of a foundation, for example. To do this, you might also need to know the, the Buzanesque stress distribution, whether that's the Buzanesque charts or the two-to-one stress distributions. Uh, also, you'll need to know the time to consolidation question. So you'll have to calculate the time to 90% uh, consolidation, for example. There, also, there, there might also be some conceptual questions relating to pre-consolidation stress, primary versus secondary consolidation, um, things like that. So effective and total stresses, one of them accounts for pore pressure and the other doesn't. Bearing capacity, uh, these are your Terzaghi bearing capacity equations. So make sure you understand how to find the bearing capacity factors. Also, make sure you know how to use the shape factors. So a circular footing is going to have a different bearing capacity than a square footing, for, for example. And you definitely need to know how to incorporate the water table. There's different bearing capacity equations depending on how close the water table is to the bottom of foundation. 
Uh, foundation settlement, that can either be elastic settlement in the case of granular soils, or it can be consolidation settlement, which is the same as the consolidation topic. Slope stability, uh, there might be some conceptual questions on limit equilibrium analysis or the method of slices, but most likely it's going to be Taylor's method, so make sure you know how to use the stability charts. Okay, now on to structural mechanics. Um, dead and live loads, so know all the load combinations from ASCE 7 and know that you have to use the largest combination. Bending, know how to calculate moments and moment, moment diagrams. You'll need to understand bending stress. So for example, they may give you a section and a moment and ask you what the largest compressive stress is, which is the bending stress. So make sure you know how, how to calculate section modulus and your moment of inertias. Know how to convert moments into force couples and also know that moments are only carried by beam flanges in the case of steel beams. Shear, again, know how to draw shear diagrams. Uh, there are standard shear diagrams in one of the appendices in CIRM. That, that's very helpful during the exam. Know that shear is only carried by the beam web in the case of steel beams. Axial is straightforward, it's carried by the full sectional area. Combined stress, this is when you have bending and axial stress. Uh, there's simple code checks in the steel AISC uh, handbook. Deflections, the, this is going to be a standard loading scenario, so you can use the basic deflection equations in the back of the CERM. Um, beams, I would say know how to design singly reinforced concrete beams and know how to design steel beams. So, so for that, you can use the beam selection charts in the AISC handbook. Columns, know how to design both concrete and steel columns. So you'll have to know how to use KL over R, know your boundary conditions, know how to use the concrete short column design charts. Also know how to convert eccentric loads into moments. Slabs, uh, know the difference between one and two way slabs. Footings, know the failure modes and how to design for each one. Know when to use factored and unfactored soil pressures. It's easy to get this confused with the bearing capacity calculation approaches. And retaining walls, uh, this is most likely your overturning, sliding, and bearing capacity failure modes. Okay, next topic, hydraulics and hydrology. So first topic there is open channel flow. That's basically Manning's equation. There is a high probability this will be on the exam, which is good because it's a relatively simple equation to use. Stormwater collection and drainage, that's culverts, so know your different controls like upstream and downstream controls, know what a performance curve is, uh, know, know how to calculate pipe flows. Um, gutters, that's basically a variation on Manning's equation. Uh, sewer pipes, know, know the difference between full pipes and not full pipes. You're, you're probably going to have to apply the energy equation as well. Uh, storm characteristics. That is going to be your probability distributions. For example, what is the probability a storm will occur in n years? There's a simple equation for that. Alternatively, what's the probability that a storm will not occur in n years? That's 1 minus the previous probability. Uh, runoff analysis. This is your Q equals CIA. It's a beautifully simple equation. Uh, there's the curve number approach, also relatively simple if you have all the inputs for your variables. Um, definitely know how to calculate time of concentration. That might be more of a conceptual question. Um, definitely know how to use a, a hydrograph and a unit hydrograph. Uh, detention and retention ponds. One of them is temporary and one of them is per permanent. They're basically to control runoff though. Pressure conduits. That's your Hazen Williams and Darcy uh, Wiesbach equations. You're essentially calculating friction loss. Um, they are both simple equations. Uh, you'll probably just be inputting values. Where it might get more complicated though is, for example, they might ask you to calculate the friction loss in a parallel system of pipes, uh, which can be quite complicated unless you remember that your friction loss is going to be the same in all pipes in parallel, uh, in which case your problem becomes a lot simpler. 
Um, the energy and continuity equation, that's Bernoulli's equation. Definitely do not skip all over that. There is a high probability it will rear its head on probably more than one occasion during the exam. Okay, geometrics. Um, horizontal and vertical curves and traffic flow equations. You'll definitely get a question on each of these. They're all straightforward equations, but I would say know how to use angles in minutes and seconds and practice using stationing as a as distance. Uh, materials, soil classification. So that's your unified soil classification system. Basically, you just need to know how to use the chart based on sieve analyses. Um, also know how to use Casa Grande's plasticity chart. So you'll need to know a plastic limit, li liquid limit, li liquidity index, plasticity index. Um, Ashto also has a soil classification system that you might get asked on. Again, it's relatively straightforward. You probably just need to practice it to get the timing down. Soil properties, uh, strength. You might get questions on drained versus undrained strength. You'll probably be asked on more Coulomb failure criterion, so know what uh, friction angle and cohesion are and how to use them. You might get a question on more circle. Uh, principal stresses, things along those lines. Concrete and structural steel, from a material standpoint, they're they're a little bit simpler. Know, know your strength and stiffness of each. Uh, concrete, you should probably know about additives and cement types. For example, what type of Portland cement would you use to protect against sulfate attack? Um, material test methods, these are your Atterberg tests, your unconfined compressive strength tests, your point load tests, things along those lines. Probably know which ASTM standards each of those are uh, related to. Compaction, uh, know your standard and modified proctors. Uh, practice a few of the field cone test questions. Know how moisture contents impact compaction and also know compaction methods. So for example, using a sheet foot roller for cohesive soil versus a drum roller for granular soils. Now the final topic, site development. Most of this is conceptual. So excavation and embankment. Um, this is OSHA popping up again. So you might be asked, you know, given a soil type, what kind of slope you, you can achieve. Um, you might also have some area and vol volume calcs in there. Construction layout, again, conceptual questions. Erosion and sediment control, um, again, conceptual. You might be asked on how to protect a slope. This has to do with you know covering the slope in poly or adding swales, uh, things like that. Drainage layers. Uh, impact of construction on adjacent facilities. Again, conceptual, uh, this is probably going to be a cause of settlement from dewatering or excavation. Uh, vibration from construction also might cause damage. And finally, safety. This is OSHA popping up again. And yeah, that's it. Okay, so that wraps up what's on the, on the morning exam. Keep in mind that this was just a very brief overview of what's on the morning exam. It by no means covers everything. But hopefully it's helpful in getting you started. You know, the PE exam can be challenging and maybe even a little overwhelming because of the breadth of topics you have to cover. But remember, the questions are usually simple and they're testing your basic understanding of the concepts. A lot of the questions with big equations are usually just a matter of plugging in the information they give you in the question. Uh, so if a question seems overly complicated, there's a pretty good chance you're doing it wrong. And there's probably some trick that simplifies it. And one more thing to watch out for is that they know the common mistakes that examinees make and they'll solve the problem using one of those mistakes and they'll take that wrong answer and they'll give that to you as one of the options. Just, just to trick you. So check your work. I finished the morning session with about an hour and a half to spare. Uh, and if you and if you have time to spare at the end as well, I definitely recommend that you go back and check your work just to see if you can pick up on, on any of those tricks. I wish you all the best of luck, and I hope that you share your experience in the comments below. Good luck.